Hello everyone, my name is Matt and welcome back to another video. The summer is coming to an end and the new school year is coming very, very quickly. So I wanted to release a lesson for the first day of school for grades three and grade four. Uh, previously, I had a lesson for grade one and grade two, which I had listed as for grade three as well. But I realized, you know, if you don't have absolute beginners in grade three, that lesson is going to be way too easy. If you do have absolute beginners in grade three, definitely just use that lesson for the first day of school. But if you're teaching grade three or grade four and they're not absolute beginners, I wanted to have this lesson for you so you knew what to do, okay? Uh, I also have a lesson for grade five and grade six for the first day of school, but that would probably be too difficult for most grade threes and grade fours. So I wanted to release a first day of uh, school lesson for grade three and grade four, which is a self-introduction lesson. It's a great time for the teacher to introduce themselves. Uh, the classroom management strategy, which if you haven't seen my video about my classroom management strategy, I'll leave a link above. That's a really great video explaining how I manage my classes. And the first day of school lays the foundation for that. So in this lesson, you'll see how I introduce everything and how I explain the points and the rules and the stars and everything like that on the first day of school. And like I said, this is a self-introduction lesson. so. It's a lesson where the kids can talk about themselves and you can assess their level and see what they can do. And there's a little writing activity at the end as well. So it's just a great way for you to introduce yourself, introduce your rules, your classroom management style, and for the kids to get an opportunity to talk about themselves, play a fun game, and then do a writing activity. So I, I really think this lesson is gonna be good for you if you're teaching grade three or grade four. And uh, yeah, if you do wanna purchase this lesson yourself, don't forget, you can just go to the video description below Click that link and you can download this lesson in moments. And there's a lot of other links there. Dozens of PowerPoints are now available for download. Or you can go to my Taobao store and you can also find it there. If you do find videos like this useful, don't forget to smash the like button. That really helps out my channel. Subscribe if this is your first time here and leave a comment below if you have any questions. All right, let's get into the walkthrough. All right, let's have a look at this PowerPoint. So this is the first day of school. This is for grades three and grade four. Um, if you have absolute beginners, uh, like let's say you know grade three has never had English before, don't teach this lesson to them. This lesson is assuming they've already learned English a little bit for a year or two years, um, and they know the basics, okay? So uh, if they, they are absolute beginners in grade three, I would teach them other lesson. I have um, a lesson designed for the first day of school for grade one and two. I actually used to have that as listed as grade, grades one, two, and three, but I've adjusted it recently just to grades one and two, and this is the lesson for the first day of school for grades three and grade four, okay? But if they're absolute beginners, definitely don't teach this to them, okay? This is assuming they're not absolute beginners. So go back and teach, uh, teach the, take a look at the first day of school lesson I have for grades one and two and see if you think that's appropriate for your grade threes. It definitely will be if they're absolute beginners. And in many parts of China, grade three is when they start um, English, you know? But generally some of the kids have some, you know, classes outside school or they've learned something, okay? So that's why I'm using this for grade three. But if you know that you're in some area where their, their English is zero, don't teach this lesson. It'll be way too hard. Your lesson will not go well. So go back and teach the lesson I have for grades one and grade two, okay? Now, in my class, I have classroom rules. If you go and check out any of my videos, you'll see that I have a whole classroom management system that I run, and it's based on you know them following my rules. So I have a video which I recently put out going through my classroom management strategy. I would highly recommend you go and watch that video. It'll be very useful to you if you're a, beginning te a beginner teacher and you don't know how to manage a large class. Even if your class only has 10 kids or 15 kids or 20 kids, it'll still help you. Um, and part of that strategy is having the kids on teams. Okay, so I'm gonna explain this. I'm gonna explain to the kids that they're on teams is the first day, okay? And you know, I'll say this class is, has teams. And if I know I'm gonna put them in four teams, I'll show them the slide like this. If I think I'm gonna put them in six teams, I'll add team five and six to, the, to this slide. Now in my class, they're in rows, you know? So it's a girl and a boy sitting together and there's like uh, maybe 13 or 15 kids in each team, about. So there's like 45 kids, actually a little less than that. So maybe there's like 10, 10 to 12 kids on each team. And um, I will tell them, okay, you are team one, team one, stand up. Hello, team one, okay, sit down. You are team two, team two, stand up. Hello, team two. Make sure they know that they're on teams. And on the board, I write, you know, I have a little like box with like team one, team two, team three, and team four. And I, I give them five points to start the class, okay? Make sure you go and watch my video. I go through and explain how all that works, okay? And then I go through how they can get points, okay? So they follow the classroom rules and they can also win points during games, okay? And how can they lose points, okay? They break the classroom rules or they're rude, okay? So rude behavior in class, they will lose points, okay? They're gonna see this very quickly as your class goes, especially if you implement my strategy. They're gonna learn real quick 
how they're going to get points and lose points and be strict, especially in the beginning. Okay. So uh, the team that has the most points will get a star. So at the end of each class, count the score and give a star to the team and keep track of those stars. Again, go back and watch my classroom management video and you'll see exactly how this works. I just want to mention it here so that you have an idea about why I'm putting them on teams and why I think it's so important. Okay. The team at the end of the month or at the end of the semester with the most stars can get a gift. I do it at the end of the semester. Okay. And that's basically how the beginning of the class is going to go before I go into the, the actual lesson. Okay. Okay. So here you just want to tell the kids that they should have a notebook in your class. Uh, it's a basic requirement. They should have a notebook and um, tell their teacher to remind them or to tell the parents if they have a group chat to bring a notebook. And anytime the kids see the notebook here, they should write down uh, the word or sentence or whatever it is. In this in this first lesson, there's not going to be any notes they really need to take. They can take notes, but there won't be any there won't be any like required note taking. But at, at the end of the class, if they have a notebook, it'll be helpful because there is an activity where they need to write down stuff. Okay. Now it's the first day of school. The kids, in my experience, are going to be quite curious about you. They're going to want to know a lot of things about you. So in order just to get that out of the way and for them to learn about you, uh, this first activity is based around them learning about some things about you. And the way I've designed this lesson is a lot of the language which is going to show up in the first lesson, I mean the first part, um, is going to be stuff that's in the second part, which is about them. And then in the third part, which is a self-introduction, which is again using the same language that they're going to see in this first part, in the second part, and the third part. So the, the, language, the lesson all goes together. It's linked together, okay? They're going to start seeing similar language. And also this is the first day of school. So you want to start assessing their level. You know, so this first lesson is very much about seeing what they already know, stuff they should have learned in grade one or grade two. And may, if they don't know stuff, then you learn the first lesson. Okay, they don't know how to say, you know, where they're from. Okay, you, you learn that really, really quickly uh, when, you, when, you, when you present that question to them. So the first activity, like I said, is about you. It's kind of a pop quiz about you. So what, what you do is you tell the students they need to raise their hand and choose one of the questions. So because the kids are on teams, um, you're going to have like, they're going to be uh, guessing based, uh, guessing by team. Okay. So choose one student from any of the teams. They're going to say one of the questions. They're going to guess one of the questions. And each one of these blocks is a link, which will take you to that specific question and the multiple choice for uh, the multiple choice answers for that question. So let's say the first uh, student says, what's your favorite food? Okay. So before you click on it, choose one student from each team to stand up. Okay, so they're, they're going to be the ones that are guessing, okay, or at least saying the answer, okay, and you click on it, it takes you to that question, what's your favorite food, it presents the four options, now this is my favorite food, right, that's what they're going to find out, and each team has a guess, the representative from team one says steak, okay, so you put a C next to team one, team uh, two says pizza, you put B next to team two and so on. They can guess the same thing. If all four teams say pizza, that's fine, okay? And also, that's the right answer, pizza, yay, that's my favorite food, okay? And then on the board, I would write, my favorite food is pizza, okay? I'd write it out very clearly on the board. And then also, if you do purchase this PowerPoint, just so you know, very easy. I know maybe this is not one of your favorite foods. One of these is not one of your favorite foods. You can easily just here, write your favorite food. Maybe your favorite food is spaghetti. You write spaghetti here. Okay, that way it's already that 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 box is already programmed to flash as the winning answer, so it's very easy for you. You can just in that box write your favorite food, and you can change the other ones if you want, and it's very easy. Okay, click here, it takes you back. Okay, rinse and repeat. Choose another student from one of the teams. They stand up and say, "What's your favorite sport?" Okay, choose one student from each team to participate to be the ones who guess or at least say the answer, right? Because their whole team might be trying to help them. Um, click on it. What's your favorite sports? Give them the four options. Swimming, running, football, basketball. They give you their guess. Each one gives you their guess. Write it down, write it down so you don't forget, okay? Put an A, B, C, D next to whoever, whichever team guesses so you don't forget. You know, I made that mistake before. You don't remember what each team guesses and then like it doesn't, the game doesn't work. Reveal the answer. I'm a runner, so I like running. We're gonna know a lot about that later because I in a lot of my lessons, I'll bring it up. And then give the points. Oh, I don't know if I said you can give like two or three or whatever how many points you want to the winning team or the winning teams. And then click back. Okay. And rinse and repeat for the other ones. There, each one of these has, uh, you know, obviously there's multiple choice. 
answers for each question, okay? Um, yeah, do you have a pet? I'll just show you this one since you can, so you can see. Uh, this one is, first it says, yes, I have a pet. So the answer is not yes or no, but they need to guess uh, what kind of pet I have, a dog, a cat, a fish, or a hamster. Now, I have a cat, okay? His name is Louie, so a cat is the answer here. And then, that's it. Click and go back, and once you go through all six questions, write all six answers on the board, then you click here to go to the next part of the lesson. So click here or here, and these are also links which will t take you to the next part of the lesson, okay? Okay, so the second activity is getting to know your, stu your students. Not just knowing about different things about them, but again, assessing their level, okay? And you'll see a lot of the language in the second part was also in the first part with some additions, okay? So the first thing we're gonna, the first uh, thing you need to show them is this is a spinning wheel game. All right, what's a spinning wheel? All right, this is a spinning wheel. All right, this wheel spins, okay? Uh, what, what I would do is I call on one student from team one and they say, for, you say first, say spin, spin, and then say stop, okay? And if it stops on yellow, uh, yellow goes with the yellow question because each one of these colors also is a color here. I don't know if you picked up on that. So yellow goes to yellow, click on it, it takes you to the question. And you can have the whole class ask that student, do you have a pet? Or you can say, team one, please ask him, do you have a pet? And team one says, do you have a pet? And you say, good job, team one. You asked very well, five points, okay? If they ask really well, they can get five points. You can even be more specific and tell them, if you ask really, really well, I'll give you five points. If you don't ask well, I'll only give you one point to motivate them to ask together and ask very nicely. Okay, so do you have a pet? The student says, yes, I do. I have a dog, okay? And then you can say, what's your dog's name? And they can say, my dog's name is whatever their dog's name is, okay? And they say it. Or they can say, no, I don't have any pets. And then after the answer, click here. It'll take them to this slide where they can get points and they can either choose a block, one of these blocks, or spin the wheel, either or. If they spin the wheel, it's as simple. They spin, they stop, they get points. If they choose a block, let's say they decide they want this block, you click on it and then they get six points. So it's either or, don't let them do both, okay? And then go back, choose a student from the next team, spin, stop. Red, or right, red is question five. Question five, what do you like to eat? And they can look there, they don't have to say one of these foods, but um, you know, they can. it'll help them if they're like on the spot, they can't think. And they should say, I like to eat eggs, but I don't like to eat pizza. Now here you're really seeing, what do they know? You know, you're really seeing, do they know how to use the word but? <clears throat> do they understand what it means? You know, <clears throat> if they just say, I like to eat ice cream, you can say, you know, what don't you like to eat? And they can say, I don't like to eat bananas. Then you can lead them through the answer. I like to eat ice cream, but I don't like to eat bananas, okay? It's up to you. And then go back and take a drink of water here. My throat's really dry. And they can choose a block or spin the wheel. So it's, you know, if they saw they got lucky here with a six, but they're like, oh, maybe there's a higher one over here they can get. They'll try to spin the wheel. So spin. They say stop, or you can actually have them physically. They can physically touch the, the board to do it. They stop, ooh, seven, so that team gets seven. And go back. Next team comes up, they spin the wheel. Green, question two. Oh, again, make sure that their team asks them the question so they can get extra points. So now team three, say team three, please ask the question. What is your favorite school subject? You can lead them through it, you know. You can, you can say the question first, what is your favorite school subject? then have the team say it, or you can have one other student on the team who volunteers to ask the question to their teammate. Okay, there's many ways you could do it, okay? I like to, it's the first day of school, so I might just ask them the question myself, but if I see like, you know, I think they can do it, I'll be like, oh, team two, please ask the question, and you can decide whether or not you wanna give points to motivate them, okay? Because it, it might be just a great way to involve more students, okay? And they say, my favorite subject is math. Good job. Now, this will really you'll get, start to see like, you know, do they know what this means? Do they understand what this means? If it's grade four, I think they definitely know. Grade three, in my school, they definitely know. But maybe in your school, they don't know. So that's where you're gonna start to see like, oh, okay, they don't know this stuff. And what I would recommend is, before you go in the first day, you can talk to, you know, your co-teacher. You can show them the lesson and say, 
do they know this stuff? You know, if not, go back and teach them the first day of school lesson of grade one and two. It'll be much easier for them. But like I said, if it's too easy, you know, that also can backfire on you if it's too easy because then they'll think it's boring. Okay. All right, choose a block. Let's say the student says they want this one. Only four points. Okay. And rinse and repeat for each question. I'll just go through the other questions you can see. We have what's your favorite season? It's kind of a dialogue. My favorite season is winter. What do you like? Or why do you like winter? Because I like to go sledding. So they can see the different answers. It becomes like a dialogue. For this one, you can bring up two students and have them do the dialogue. Okay. Get points. Let's say choose this one. Oh, eight points. Whoa. Go back. Uh, question four is what's your favorite sport? There's a bunch of sports there. Point spin stop. Oh, eight points. Okay. Uh, I think we did question five, right? I guess I don't remember. Yeah, what's your favorite food? We already did that one. Then we have question six is <clears throat> what's your English name? Okay, my English name is Teacher Moat. How are you today? I'm great because I love English. So you really get to see what they know here, okay? Uh, just some example names there. They don't have to choose one of those. They should have English names probably. Uh, spin the wheel. Stop. Oh, eight points again. Uh, question six, I think we already did. All right, let's, my memory is not good. All right, we did question six. Let's go to question seven. Question seven. Oh, where are you from? Okay, so they should say I'm from, uh, I live in Nanjing. So they would say I'm from Nanjing, China. Okay, so they would say their answer and this should help them. They can see the city. They're all probably from the same city if you're in you know, a certain city. Some of the kids really, even though they're from Shanghai, they feel like they're from wherever their parents are from. So they might say that's their hometown, which is totally fine. Uh, if they wanna say they're from Beijing or Chengdu or wherever they wanna say, that's totally fine. Um, and maybe you're in another country, so they have a different one. Or maybe you're in an international school and they have, they're all from different countries. So this will be really great. You can really learn about who's from where, okay? And I believe that's the last question they get points and I think that's all we did question eight so there's there are the eight questions okay that's how that's how the whole thing works and yeah I think this is a really great activity um, to just get to know the kids and um, to get to get to see what they know you know you get to really assess their level okay so I just I think it's really you know a great activity now let's go to the next part of the lesson all right so I just realized I forgot a link so I just added it in so you guys have it here if you purchase this lesson. This happens when I'm going through the walkthroughs or run-throughs. I'll see like different mistakes, little things here and there. So it's like a la a fi like a, a final chance for me to really see if there's anything missing from the lesson, a way for me to check the lesson. So I just realized there wasn't a link uh, to take you to the next uh, part of the lesson. So um, obviously you could just click on question eight. You know, you just click question eight and then go to the, the points and then just go to the next thing and it would take you to that slide. You could do it, um, but it's also convenient. Like what if you're back on this slide and you don't want to have to click through everything or, you know, it's just having a link here, you can click. that'll take you directly to the next part of the lesson is really useful. So I just added that in there. All right, so the next part of the lesson, they're gonna to need to write. So tell them to please take out a notebook or a piece of paper and they have to number it. So please number a page in your notebook from one to 16 or obviously it could just be a piece of paper. Uh, so they write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And you can go around the room and see if they're doing it correctly. When someone is, has done it correctly, you can hold it up and show everyone, you know, this is good job. And you can give their team a point or something, you know, for being very fast. And then you can find another student from another team who did it. Oh, good. And then give that team points just to motivate them to all do it. And, you know, you'll, you'll see it's the first day. So, you know, getting them to follow these directions is an important part of the lesson. Okay, so here's what we're going to need to do. They're going to need to write down their answer on their piece of paper next to each number to complete this um, this information about them. So, hi, my name is number one. They write their name, and I'm from two, and they should write down where they're from. Okay, it can be the city and the country. Okay, so they just saw all of these questions during the activity. So they should be able to do it. That's the idea. They should be able to do it. Okay. So my name is Matt and I'm from the USA or I'm from and say your city and country. I am how many years old? And they don't, like I said, they don't have to write out the, all the sentences. All they need to do is just write down their single word answer 
next to each one. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There are 16 different questions. Okay, so it's pretty easy, you know. Um, for, for maybe for this one, I'm a student at, and they should write the name of their primary school. They might not know what this is. Um, you can just say, what's the name of your school? What's the school's name? And once, once someone says the school's name, uh, they can write it in Chinese. They don't have to write the whole name out in English. They might, they definitely don't know how to do that. Uh, I am happy today because, and for this one, again, it's kind of open-ended. They can write down what they want. Again, assessing their level, seeing what they can do, you know, in this kind of activity you're seeing, can they read it now? Do they understand how to do it? And you'll very quickly assess, okay, this this is way too easy for them. You know, if I show this to my grade threes, you know, they're, some of them are gonna do it so quickly, and then other ones might struggle a little bit, but they're all gonna be able to get through it. But in your class, you might find, wow, they're really bad at writing. We need to work more on writing. Wow, they're really bad at reading. They can't really understand it that well. But if you say it to them, like, oh, I understand, okay? So this is, this is what the first day of school is. Establish your classroom rules. Play some simple activities where they can get games and learn about your classroom management style. And also present them with an activity that they need to write and see what they can do. How well do they write, okay? So once they complete it and they go through, um, you can ask who wants to share, okay? And they can come up to the front with their piece of paper or their notebook and they can say it, okay? And now you get to hear them speak. Okay, so it comes full circle finally again. You can hear them say the whole thing together. And this might be difficult for them. If you, if you don't have enough time, this can be homework. Okay, and for homework, they can complete it. Um, you know, it might take like, once they're doing this, you realize, okay, there's only gonna be five minutes left. They're not gonna finish this, but they get started with it. They start to go through it and, and try to do it. And you tell their teacher that, you know, you tell it to them, but then also remind their teacher and send the homework to the teacher maybe through a group chat or whatever. And so they all are aware of what the homework is, okay? And like, again, if you have time at the end of class, maybe one, two or three students can come up and they can read their self-introduction and they can say their answer. So, hi, my name is Tom. I'm from, number two, I'm from oh, Nanjing, China. I am eight years old and I'm a student at, and they say, okay? And they do the whole thing. Um, maybe one or two presents or maybe a few more do present during class and then the next day of school or the next day of class with them, you can ask who would like to share for extra points for your team, okay? And another thing you can do here to really motivate them either in the first class or in the second class is have a grab bag with different stuff in it like rulers, pencils, um, erasers, all sorts of goodies, maybe some toys, little toys that they could reach in there and pull out. Um, or you can do it with pieces of paper. So it's just pieces of paper in there and on a table you have different items. So each piece of paper, let's say the piece of paper they pull has a five on it. Five corresponds with something you uh, have a five next to on a piece of paper, I mean on a table. So let's say five is like a pencil. So on the table you have like a bunch of items. Each item has a number next to it. They pull a five out. Five, oh five, that's a eraser. Good job, and they sit down. So it motivates them to want to come up and you know, take the plunge and try to do their self introduction, say it, and then get a chance to reach in the grab bag, get a, some item and then go, go and sit down. Okay, so you can do that to motivate them, okay? Again, this, this is just a time to assess their, uh, their level and also you can learn a little bit about them. They wanna talk about themselves, you know? They wanna share like, oh, you know, my favorite season or whatever, my favorite sport. You could change this to my favorite toy, to my favorite whatever movie if you think their level is a bit higher. Or I wouldn't do movie with my grade threes, but maybe, you know? you think that they know it, okay? So it's just up to you. Like I said, if you do decide to download this PowerPoint, everything you see can be changed, edited, uh, customized to whatever you want, okay? The idea is I'm just showing you how I would do it and you can, um, if you do download this, it'll save you a ton of time because the PowerPoint's already put together. And I have some examples here of what these, uh, like what it could look like. I mean, you don't have to show this during class, but you can send this uh, with the homework so they can, the parents can see like some examples of what what it might look like, okay? So that's why I have it there, okay? And that's the whole lesson. Um, it's the first day of school, so it should be a fun one. I try to make my first day of school a fun lesson that kids wanna participate in, and the writing activity at the end, give them, like I said, you can give them five. If you have enough time, they can um, complete it and come up and share it. If not, carry that over into the second lesson, connect the two lessons, and the second lesson can just be sharing for like the first 10 minutes and getting stuff out of the grab bag.
Okay, and that's the that's it. All right, I really hope that was useful. If you'd like to download that lesson yourself, don't forget, just go to the video description below, find the link for it, click on it, you can download it really quickly, or you can go to my Taobao store and you can also find it there. Again, please leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, that really helps out my channel. Subscribe if this is your first time here, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.